Hi everybody, this is Diane. In Monday's video, we started working on these smash books and I showed um, putting the pages in the right order and adding a few pockets and punching holes with my solder bind it all. And now I'm going to add the wires to this one. The other two are already done and then we can do a flip through because once I add the wires and um, put the elements back in the pockets, the book is done. So we can do a flip through of all three journals once we get this um, bound. So this is a one inch um, O-wire. It's called a double O-wire, but it's one inch. When it's all bound, it'll, it will be a one inch in diameter. Um, it has, this has 21 holes in it, so I need to cut off any extras. Just looking for my pliers. Or my snips, I mean. So I need 21. Actually, the easiest way is to just slip them in the holes, and I see I have three extra at the end. So I'm going to snip those three off. See, there's my there's my snip, and at the other on the other side of the snip are three pieces of the wire, so we should be good. Now, I know I've shown this before, but it's been a while. I have my book in the proper order that I want it, but I want the the ends, like, let me show you. I want this part where you can see like the seam right there where the two parts of the wire meet. I want that to be on the inside of the book. And in order for that to happen, I have to flip the back of it around and that way the um, that seam part will be on the inside and when you close it up you won't see it. So we start with the inside back cover. I lay the wire down on my table and just start putting my pieces on. It doesn't take as long as you think it might. Oop, I thought maybe they would line up for me and I could just do a bunch at once. I have a couple here. Go. I did add um, some small pieces. I think that this needs to go this way. I added three of these small pieces just to have a little bit more in this journal. I think that's why it didn't line up properly. This page doesn't seem to line up with the rest of them. It hangs down a little. Yeah, these are gonna, these are right down to the bottom of the page uh, cover. That's what happens, as I mentioned in the previous video, if you don't have an even um, measurement on your book, it should be to the inch or the half inch, and these books are not. They're like to the quarter inch, or they're just an odd. So the pages don't line up the way they should. But we're gonna we're gonna go with it. This small page is from a smash book, I think. The pages are different sizes, so it's hard to make get them all to line up so you can put on a bunch at a time, but we'll get it done. These are even the same size and they don't line up. The 
going to move this one up just because I can. No, I can't. That one I can, this one I can't. That's not right. Woohoo, two at a time. And the last one. Okay, now everything is on the wires. The book is, the book, two book covers are facing each other. The right side is facing each other. So now I'm going to take this end that has the small loop. This is the squared off bigger loop. I'm going to take the rounder small loop and put that toward the back toward the big part of my zutter so what to cut to cut the papers I put the papers in this channel to squeeze the wires shut it goes in this channel and I already have it set for the one inch you can set it for different widths of wire but I almost always use the one inch it's already set so I'm going to stand up so I can do this properly. So I have my book pages and cover in the center of the wire. There's a little bit of a dip right there. So you kind of rest them as well as you can in that little dip. And then you put, I have five of the wires in that channel. You do not want to have a wire that's half in and half out. That will mess it up when you squeeze it. So make sure any wires that are in there are in there all the way. And then hold them where you want them and then just squeeze it. And there you have five of them squeezed shut. Now I'm going to move on down. Do another five. You can do six. Just don't leave it so you have two at the end. It's, it's tricky to just do two. You want more than two. And move it down. I've done it where I had to take it all apart, throw the wire away, and do it again because the wires were misshapen because I didn't hold it in there properly. So let's hope we did it right this time. They look pretty good. Looks pretty good. So, And you have to close the book from the front to the back. You can't close it this way because that's in the way so you have to close it this way and that looks pretty decent I never get a perfect O I don't know if you can I really don't but that's that's good that's a good binding for me so I'm going to put the elements that I took out I'm going to put them back in as we do a flip through and then we'll do a flip through of the other ones and I want to add a paint chip or two in here. Let's do a pink one. We have pinks and blues and greens in this book. So here's our flip through and let me just say as of right now no video of these has been on my channel so no one has requested them yet. This video, this flip through, will be up on Wednesday. So someone when the, um, the first video is going to be up on Monday. So somebody might request one of these books. Um, I am only going to take reservations for two of the books and then one will be in my shop definitely. So 
if somebody requests two of these books, then two might be spoken for already. But one will be in my shop. I just don't know which one. So here we have our Winnie the Pooh book. It's a beautiful blue fabric cover. It measures eight and three eighths. Told you it was an odd measurement uh, by 11 and a quarter. So it's a good size and it's just beautiful. It's called Winnie the, it was Winnie the Pooh's songbook. So they took, you know, um, A. A. Milne wrote words to the songs that Pooh Bear and other characters sang. So somebody took those songs and put them to music and um, it was it had illustrations on the pages and it was it's just a very sweet book. Um, this is from the 60s. So here's Pooh Bear sitting on a rock and looks like he, he's singing his heart out and it's just so sweet and precious. So one of the names of the songs was Happiness. I cut that word out of the title of the song and it was a perfect fit for this book plate. So that's the name of this smash book. It's called Happiness. It's not a Pooh themed smash book. There are some pages from this song book in here, but other than that, it's not a Pooh themed book, but you can make it one. You can find Pooh images and use them in your book. So there's the wire. I use white wire on this one, as you saw. And I used this beautiful checker print paper for the end, end papers, and then it wraps around so that it covers up the raw edge. So that's the finished book cover. Um, we worked on this together, so that is the book plate. And I added a little sack in the on the first page of each book. So this one has a little blue one and a repair tag tucked in there. So as I said, I used pink and blue and pink uh, green papers in this in this book. Most of them are double sided. We have some half pages. They're from the cutoff pieces. This one flips out. There's a pocket on this side. And in this pocket, I have one of the cutouts. It's a ledger page, and you can write on that. Just rounded the corners. And I took one of the songs, and it is... Two pages so it's three pages to the song and then there's room to write on the back if you want but it's the song is called the Morris Knows and it's got the sweet illustrations by Alan Shepard and so I put that in here it's the only Winnie the Pooh extra that I put in there besides the pages that are bound in <clears throat> here we have a dragonfly paper it's really pretty love the blues in this book look at this gorgeous. There you go. Lighting isn't great for showing these. Here's one of the pages of the songbook, Cobbleston Pie. This is a textured pink page with white on the back. When Pigs Fly. This is the page from the old Curiosity Shop collection from Graphic 45. I thought this was a good time to use it. These could be um, Piglet's ancestors. <laughs> Just, I love the colors in this book. This is a really old page. I got this set of paper when I very first started making smash books. And it was a beautiful collection. And I think this is the last page that I had. So there it is. There's a music page here, which is fitting for the book. Here's a page right from the book. Love this picture, Christopher Robin with his hands on his hips. Looks like he's giving them all a lecture or instructions or something, and they're listening quite attentively. Love those stories. Here's another flip page. These are two pages from a... Um, Pain Company smash book, which I told you I was going to talk about smash books, what a smash book is, and I didn't bring one in with me, which is what I was going to do. This says up, this says down, and so I put them on the same 
I put them together just like they were in the original book. So K and Company, which is a scrapbook company, crafting company, they had a brand, they called it Smashbooks. So it's actually a brand name. Here's a little pocket that I added with a long repair tag. And it was it's they're smaller than this and they're bound with wires, although the wires are covered on the outside and they had decorated pages and you were just supposed to smash stuff into it so it's basically a scrapbook it was just their word for a scrapbook there's another pocket and I have some paint chips and some journaling cards to tuck in that pocket and it came with accessories it had you know journaling pads and journaling cards and all kinds of stuff washi tape all kinds of stuff you could buy to go with the K and Company smash books and they were very 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 popular and I had one I filled it up and I wanted to show it to you but I didn't bring it in um, and then I bought some when they went on clearance and I just take the pages out and use them in other smash books because they're very cool pages that they used in those books so back in the day when they were popular you could see all kinds of YouTube videos of people making handmade smash books I made a ton of them a ton of them and I still like to make them but junk journals have my heart now but every now and then I have to make some smash books so on the back we did this pocket in the last video just made it made the scrap bigger and made a pocket so that you can tuck things whoops I have to glue that again. I think it was stuck to the background. So let's glue that again. But this is a darling book right here. So I um, folded over, folded under the sides so that there's just a little more give, but apparently not enough. <laughs> I can't pull on it too hard. All right, so that is happiness. So let's quickly go through the others. There isn't a whole lot to see. I just want you to see the types of papers. Oh, and by the way, each scrapbook is going to, smash book is going to come with a little bag with some elements that I took out of my stash that you can use if you want to. The point is for you to smash in <coughs> your photos, tickets, ephemera, whatever, but you can decorate with these. That goes with it. It just won't fit in the bag. And I'm also sending along the cutoffs and so you can make ephemera and pieces. Make more pockets with these. Decorate the edges of your pages with the strips. So do whatever you feel like doing with these pieces. But these are going with the Winnie the Pooh book. So this book is called Record Book, because that's the title of the book, and that's what it was. It was a record book. And this measures not quite 12 inches, like 11 and 7 eighths by... Uh, just over seven. So the pages are six and a half inches wide and I think 11, 11 inches tall. So there was a sticky spot right there where a price tag had been and I didn't even try to wash it off. I just had fun covering it. So this is a printable fragile handle with care and I just wrapped it around to that side. But these are vintage. These are original vintage stickers. So this one says this side up and then that one is just blank with a red border. So I just thought that was, it was very simple but fun. I like that. Um, and then it's just plain red on the back. This one has silver wires and I used this grayish map paper for the end paper and to wrap around. And it says, this is printed right on the paper, go with all your heart. And then this is a printable label from Roxy Creations, and I just backed it on a little piece of um, craft colored paper. These are the elements I'm sending. 
This book is a bit more grungy than the others. Well, it's quite a bit more grungy. The papers are grungy, and I love them. There's something I love about each and every one of these books. They're all different, and I love them all. And these are the cutoffs that you get. That you can do all kinds of things with. I'm not sure if these go with this book. Oh, it's the other book that's grungy. This one, this one has reds and greens and some browns, but it's basically reds and greens. So these are the cutoffs. Okay. So there's a craft card stock that is just gorgeous, and I put a craft bag on there with a repair tag. This is a 12 by 12 sheet that has a calendar on it, so I cut it right where there was a dividing line between Tuesday and Wednesday, and then included both pages in there. I just had to trim a tiny bit off the bottom because this book is so tall that I didn't really have to trim much off it, but this is great to write, to keep memories of a month, maybe a vacation month or something. Not, not that you go for a whole month, but you know, a special time in your in your life. This is a textured paper, and I put a pocket on this side. These are both cut off pieces. Love this paper from Graphic 45. This is also from the old Curiosity Shop. I just had some random pages that I picked up at a uh, flea market. This is an old Stampin' Up! paper. It has lines on it. It's like a notebook paper. And then there's some just some numbers on the back. This is from a Kane Company smash book. So this is the size that they were. Most of them were this size. I think they did have some miniature ones one year, and they did have a couple that were larger size. I love this page. And this has a little coffee theme on it. Much love, light, laughter, and coffee. And I made this pocket with a striped paper, which is really fun. <coughs> and I used a different kind of a punch. Can you see the shape of that? It didn't show up very well against this background, so I used a black pen and outlined all around it. And I added a plain white tag, and that is for you to decorate. Looks like it's got a little green on there. It's just made out of white cardstock, and I didn't do anything to it. That's for you to do. But I made a matching tab with the straight paper. Love this paper, too. This is a printed collage on this notebook paper, and there's up there, it looks like it's the top part of the tablet. It's just so cool. I love it. And a scrap of a paper with purses and shoes and stuff like that on it. Numbers, numbers, numbers. This is from the Kane Company Smash Book. Pull up a chair and stay a while. And here's the pocket. And I just put a little piece of yellow notebook paper there for you to write on and added a few tags in there. And I will put in a paint chip in green. And I don't think I have any red ones. So I'll just do this one. And you can do what you want to with those paint chips. Have fun with them. This is from the K & Company book but it's, it looks plain. It's got white lines on it, so that's something you can journal about if you want to, whatever images you put on. Now this is something special. Somebody sent this card to me. It is a card, and I would say it's from the 70s by the artwork of her face, although she's dressed like a turn-of-the-century, lovely, fashionable lady. I absolutely love this card. It is almost 12 inches in height and I very rarely make a book that tall so I thought this was my opportunity to use it. So there she is. Aren't you lucky whoever gets this book. I kind of wanted to keep her but I figured I might as well put her in a book, put her to use and I was able to, she had enough 
um, edges that were, were along a straight line that I could punch the holes in so she could be bound in properly. And there's a little bit, I think she had a bigger feather there, but there's a little bit left. You could add, you could put something there to dress her up if you wanted to. Again, another calendar. This one I just took a couple of thin strips that I had cut off and just decorated that white page with them. This is from the Smash book, I believe. And then the last page has a craft pocket with a label on it. You can put things in there that you intend to put in your Smash book. Um, you can put it, keep them in there until you have a chance to use them. So this one is record book. And then lastly, we have Journey. This is made with a book about stenciling. And again, you get elements. This is the one that has more grungy paper in it. And the cutoffs, lots of them. And we liked, we did this one together, that we did the cover together in the previous video, and this is a really nice end paper. So instead of covering, covering the end paper and wrapping the paper around, I just cut a one and three, no, yeah, one and a half inch strip and wrapped it around. And then when I punched the cover, the holes got punched in through that too, obviously. But I love this design. It's a book about stenciling in the home, so it's a gorgeous stencil on the front and the back. It's just a beautiful book. And I did go with this book plate by Mrs. Cog. Uh, shown from the Library of, so you can write your name there. So these are the gorgeous, gorgeous, grungy papers that I am in love with. I'm glad I got to use them, but I'm sad. I'm sad that they're used. This is a K and Company paper, I believe, one of their scrapbook papers. And in this one, I put a black little sack and a small tag. Oh, I didn't tell you the dimensions of this book. It's eight by 11. So they're all good size books. I love that matte paper. This isn't just plain black, it does have some design on it. So this book has green, black, and red, and some grunginess. So there's browns and stuff in it. This is one of the pages from the stencil book. Here's a page from the smash book. Love that old fashioned telephone. And there's a couple ladies at the turn of the century. One lady's driving a car. They didn't really do that too much, I don't think. And it says, floor it, girlfriend. Love this page. Look at the numbers on the flower. It's just a really pretty page. So there's a big mix of different types of papers in here from different companies and different, just different kinds. Um, this is a scrap that has lines on it and I put it on as a pocket. This is an embossed tag that I embossed and I left it plain for you to do what you want to with it. And this is the fly leaf, so it matches the end paper. This is from the uh, smash book. It's got grid paper on the back. So these grungy papers are ones that I picked up at that flea market where I got the few pieces of Graphic 45. I got a pretty good sized stack of gra scrapbook paper from that flea market um, maybe two years ago. And um, 
I'm, I'm glad I'm using them. I love them. Somebody must have been getting rid of their stash because there was a bunch there. Boy, was that fun finding that. Love this page too with the map on it. So aren't these fun smash books? I love the papers in them. Here is another pocket. And this has a page that I tore out of a little, little book. You can cut that part off if you don't like it. But I left it there in case you wanted it. You can journal on that. There's a jar in there and a paint chip. Let's add another paint chip. Not the right shade of red. Let's just go with this neutral one. We have two neutral paint chips in there, but they're different. So you can cut them up, stamp on them, embellish them, whatever you want to do. I love this paper too. Oh, I didn't put a pocket here. So I'll have to put a pocket on the back of this one. Otherwise, it's done. Um, and I leave the pocket, the back pocket empty. So you can put stuff in there that you want to smash. Whatever, photos and tickets and stuff that you want to save. So I'm going to add the pocket to this. And then uh, these will be, this video will be seen on Wednesday sometime. And when the video goes up, the journals will be in my shop or whatever journals are still available will be in my shop. So I hope you like them. Let me know what you think of Smash Books. It's fun to do something like this, take a break from a junk journal, but then I'm always ready to get right back into making the junk journals because they're my favorites. So tell me what you think about Smash Books. Do you have one? Do you use one? Um, if you have a book like this, what do you use it for? I'm curious to know. Thanks for watching. Have a crafty day. Bye-bye.